All right, our next guest doesn't think the stronger than expected jobs report will stop rate cuts. Ben Emmons is founder and chief investment officer of FedWatch Advisors. Ben, great to have you with us. Um, has your outlook changed based on today's data? No, it's not, Mel. I think I think what uh, what we saw today was obviously a surprise report. You know, there was some alternative data out there that was indicating that there could be this surge underneath. You know, maybe it's the seasonal hiring that's that's going on. But if you really drill in today's report, there's some weaknesses there too, right? So the the median unemployment is now up to over 22 weeks. Number of people that are unemployed for 27 weeks or longer is almost 23 percent of total unemployed. That's all rising. So that's somewhat of a deterioration there. And I think. To Mike's point, looking in the sideway mirrors about this, some issues there around the, you know, the glowing jobs, job support, I think that's still what the Fed has its eyes on, keeping an eye on that part of the bowl. And I think this is what Goolsby said today, too. Like, this one number doesn't change our, our view just yet of, of continuing mm -hmm. lower rates over time because they're restrictive, right? So I think it doesn't change my outlook. I think this rate cut stays on the table. Markets pretty aggressive pricing completely out this, this rate cut for 50 base points. I think it could come right back if we're getting weaker, weaker data from here again. To Bonowin's point, Ben, I mean, do you forecast a period of increased volatility from now to the end of the year simply because it does seem that with every data point, the swings in probability in, in Fed funds futures have really been pretty wild. Yeah, I think he's right. I mean, it, 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 it just look at TLT, right? If you just look from the time that they cut rates till now, TLT is down 5%. So you're getting this big pop again. Today's is down even more. I think that just underscores that volatility of this constant, like trying to gauge data point to data point, and these probabilities changing. So I think the Fed has introduced some volatility, and the data itself does that too. I think too, by the way, that the signaling of rate cuts that started this summer has come, up, you know, kind of through the ISM data now of all these forward-looking indicators. So it gives the market sort of a sense like, hey, this is economy getting traction price out these rate cuts, and in the moment there's one weak data point, price them right back in. So I think you keep that volatility. Ben, did today's numbers, though, and possibly this week's ISM change anything in terms of where you think we're going to be at the end of 25? And does it even matter? But, I mean, I, I think some part of this is uh, two weeks ago we were expecting 220 basis points of cuts in 2025, no matter what happened. And, and if we have a better economy here, should that come in? And again, we, we know that the Fed fund futures markets move all over the place as well. Um, yeah. But does it change anything about how you're looking kind of medium term? I think the medium term, the market has always said like Fed, you will land around three and a half percent. That's sort of your long term rate. And they've done that since March of 2022 when they started raising rates. So that, I think, hasn't changed. And, you know, that, that number, by the way, changed, didn't change today much either. So it's more about how quickly does the Fed want to get there. A number like this gives you pause, like, you know, you don't have to get so quick to three and a half. But I do think this Fed is on the trajectory to bring rates down because they're just simply too restrictive. You know, the difference between the funds rate and the inflation continues to widen. We're getting inflation this, this Wednesday again. If that's again a touch softer, makes the real Fed funds rate again higher, right? And I think that's what the Fed looks at. Cut that, that real rate a bit down. So I think... The destination of three and a half is there. How fast they're going to get there, that's, I think, the, the, the question. So I think this Fed is going to continue maybe on a 25 base point trajectory for the, for the next meeting. But it wants to get to a lower rate. That's clear, I think. Ben, why are they still doing quantitative tightening on the balance sheet? Granted, the Treasury securities have gone down from $60 billion per month to 25. MBS has stayed the same. Isn't that a push-pull, though, with, with tightening? And being dovish on the other side? Yeah, I, th I think that's right, Steve. I mean, quantitative tightening was sort of always put in the background for the Fed, as in, you know, it works and let, let it be. And they've done this strategy before, as you remember, right? And at some point in 2018, that did backfire when the Fed's got a little too hawkish. We're now on the other side of this. So with this Fed more dovish, so to speak, or willing to lower rates, they think they can continue with this quantitative tightening. But they know, and this analysis out on this by the Fed themselves, there's a threshold and amount of liquidity in the system that they have to maintain. So I don't think they're too far off from that threshold. So I do think quantitative tightening will phase out here in the next one or two quarters. So I don't think they want to keep that going because you know, we, we've seen this these volatility coming from the balance sheet itself. right? So that, I think, is something on their mind. Ben, always great to speak with you. Thank you.